Hey, this is Mark again. Um, I talked with you about my clothes dryer heat exchanger where you've got these, uh, basically the dryer heat is dumped into this big can and then comes out the other side and goes outside. Um, then you've got uh, air, of course, coming from the room, pumped in by this little uh, mainframe fan, blows into the can, in through all this spaghetti work around in the can, um, gets heated by the air that's flowing around it, and then, of course, comes out here into the room. Um, I'm going to show you what the inside of the uh, can looks like, just because some of y'all had mentioned you were curious about it and sent me emails. This, of course, is the little uh, automatic turn-on. you got to have this because usually the person that operates the dryer won't want to flip a switch every time they turn it on. So this automatically turns on and turns off. Uh, it turns on at 95 degrees and cuts off about at 80. So once the can gets up to the right temperature, it'll start blowing heat into the room and then it'll keep on going. I'll explain uh, the heat sink that I created inside the can. If I can hold this up. Okay, you kind of go down in here. I hope you can see this. Um, if you look inside the can, you can see little uh, 12 ounce cans. Um, I think I've got 96 or so. It might be over 108 of these cans. They're um, Kroger tea cans, uh, so it's not carbonated. thought that the expansion and contraction with the heating and cooling might cause them to uh, explode, so I just use the tea. It's cheap, too. Anyway, they uh, build up heat in them as well as the can. You get radiant, radiant heat from the can, but those little cans inside the can actually keep uh, the can warmer longer, so even after the dryer has uh, stopped, um, the can is still hot and you're blowing air and still getting uh, hair, uh, hot air blown into the room from the residual heat in those little cans that were warmed up over the cycle. Um, so anyway, so here's where you can see that's the uh, intake from the dryer. Over there is where it goes out of the dryer. Here's where the fan blows air in. It goes through all this spaghetti work around in here. I have to get it arranged so it doesn't slow down too much. And then it blows out into the room here. And um, you can see I got these little tabs, these stupid little things just to make sure that you know the screw that's holding the lid doesn't cut any of these um, these really these are really thin these little uh, I don't know what they're called duct work it's very thin I don't want it to get punctured and then you don't really have a heat exchanger stuff's going to touch but anyway that's the whole version how it works you can see there's some uh, fencing down there right above the cans that keeps the um, the duct work from getting uh, into the uh, you know falling through and getting pinched. Anyway, that's all. Thanks a lot. Send me more emails if you have questions. Bye.